Well, good morning again. I've got some chicken that I got from Kroger. This was on sale. It was in the refrigerated section, and I've kept it under refrigeration the whole time. It's only been about a day. I think I got it yesterday, yeah. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down and take the meat off of these carcasses I'm using gloves just to keep my hands clean. Anyway, I'm going to take the meat off and uh, can the meat and then use the bones to make uh, broth. I'll get it out in a minute. I was trying to figure out how to open the bag. I forgot. Okay. Come out of there, bird. All right. Got it in a pan. Get a knife. And uh, cut. There's a string on it. These are rotisserie chickens. They're very good. They, they're seasoned up nicely. Take the string off. Well, they're slippery. There's this. It's actually like an elastic band, and it's in a figure eight across there, and it's under the wings too. And I'll get that off in a minute. Just going to pull it apart by hand for, to start with. If I need to, I've got a knife here, and I can cut it apart. And this is just the leg and thigh part portion. So I'm going to pull that apart, pull all the skin off of it, leave that in the pan with the bones. Any fat stays in the pan with the bones. You see there's a bone there. I'm just going to pick this meat apart and get it ready for the canner. I'm putting it over in this other little pan. I don't really know how much I'll get, but I will bring you back for the jar packing process. See their skin. Now all the skin and any of the gelatinous part that's in a piece of it here, that's all really good in the broth and it's well seasoned. I'm not going to have to do anything to this bird except can it. This was uh, $2.99 on sale, so for $6, I'll we'll get several pints of canned chicken out of it, and uh, several pints of broth. In between times, uh, before I get it all ready for the jars, I will refrigerate it. Do not let your food sit out and get uh, warmed up too much. It's okay during the time that I'm taking this apart, it won't hurt anything. But uh, don't just let it sit out all day. Two hours is just about the limit that you can let anything sit out, and I don't even like to let it sit out that long. I like to get it dealt with as quickly as possible. Now I probably won't be getting a hundred percent of the meat off of here just because that's that's the way it goes sometimes. I'm gonna do my best to get all I can off of it to have some canned seasoned chicken. I don't even know how many pints I'll get out of this. I've got eight pint jars uh, ready to go. Cleaned up and everything. Got my lids and rings already. But, uh, 
and that may be all I get out of it. If it's not, if I get more, then I'm probably going to have to borrow some jars from my sister. And yes, I'll can the white meat and the dark meat together in this instance because uh, it all works. I'm going to show you. Go down beside the keel bone on the chicken. And then just work that breast portion off. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? These chickens like this are not very big. But they're really tender and we really like the rotisserie chicken anyway. I'm just going to break that apart. And uh, get all the meat off these birds that I can. Hey. I'll bring you right. The deboning is done. It took maybe 20 minutes to debone it completely. <clears throat> if there's any tidbits left on here, as I mentioned before, it'll be fine. Uh, I don't have to get them. Yeah, I can't. I don't have to get them all off because that broth, even if it has a little meat in it, it'll be all right uh, to to use that because I'm going to can it at the same time as I can the chicken, which will be 75 minutes. Okay, the pan that I'm going to be boiling these bones in. Is this is actually a spaghetti cooker so it has uh, a sleeve that goes down inside of it that will drain things so I'll put the bones in here in here and just cover them with water I don't want to go too high because I'm not trying to create a lot of broth All I want is really enough broth to can the chicken, <coughs> but uh, get some of that gelatin out. Probably can't see what I'm doing there. Just gonna dump it all in here. I'm just going to cover this with water. You see in there? I'm just going to co just cover this with water uh, and let it simmer not very long. I don't want to boil it. Boiling will make everything cloudy. If you simmer your bones or whatever you're going to do to make broth, just simmer them. You don't need to boil them hard. Just simmer that stuff and the, your broth will come out okay. much better. Got it in the water and it's got the stove turned on. I'll bring it up to a simmer and let it simmer 30 minutes, an hour, something like that. It's not going to take long because you're not trying to cook this. This is already cooked, basically. You're just trying to get all, extract all the broth and all the gelatin and fat off of here. Then when it's done, we'll pull this out and uh, put the pan let it cool a minute, a few minutes, then put it in the refrigerator so all the fat rises to the top. Okay, I've simmered my chicken bones, removed them from the pot, and I have about this much uh, broth in here. Let it cool a little bit, and then I'll put everything in the refrigerator. I may have some more meat I can pick off these, and if I can pick some off of here, then I will... Uh, put that in here as well because I don't mind having bits of meat and even the NCHFP says you can have tidbits of meat in your broth and the fact is I'm going to be processing for the full time for chicken which will be 75 minutes so it's not even going to matter if there's uh, tidbits in there hello well it's time to finish my canning project I've let the uh, broth sit and let the fat come to the top. As you can see, I'm skimming it off now. And then I'm going to put the meat <clears throat> back in here. Get everything good and hot. I don't want anything cold going into the jars. I want it all to be well heated. And 
and you know I'll, I'll explain to you again about the fat the reason of I'm getting all the fat off uh, if you don't take all the fat possible you can't really get every bit of it off but you can try if you don't get as much as possible out of the broth or off your meat that fat can creep up the sides of the jars while it's processing under that high heat and uh, compromise the seals. It can go up over the rim of the jar and make it where it doesn't seal or make it where the seal is bad. So I'm going to put all the meat back in this back into the broth then I'll use a slotted spoon to lift everything out that I can uh, as far as the meat goes uh, and get it where the jars are packed I've got <clears throat> a one wide mouth jar in the canner this is hot pack so I'm not worried about it being in regular jars and I've got I've got seven regular regular uh, pint jars now I, I can my meat in pints because a pint of meat is really pretty much all that we need for a meal to make almost any recipe occasionally we'll need a quart or we'll need two pints if we want to have more just meat in the meal but for most recipes, like pot pies or dumplings or noodles or something like that, a pint is plenty because there's only two people in my household. Okay, I'm going to put this over on the stove and get it heated up and I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm getting my, my uh, tools out ready to can got my water in my canner heating up and the jars are in it. I've got uh, lids and rings in this bowl. My jar tongs. Spoon for taking the chicken, chicken out of the broth. A ladle to get the broth out to put in the jars. A wooden spoon. I'm just going to use the handle to get the uh, air bubbles out of the jars got my paper towel soaked in vinegar and I've got a plate that I can set my jar in to, make, to keep from getting so many spills okay I've got the broth and the chicken heated up I've got all my equipment out here I think I don't think I've forgotten anything so now I'm going to start filling jars. I've had them heating in my canner as I usually do. And this is a time when I really wish I did have the canning, my canning funnel with me. I totally forgot to bring it and I can't find mom's. It may be over at my sister's house. I don't know. But this is going to be tricky. Getting uh, getting this chicken in here. It's a little concerning that, that I think the places where people are it's hot. Mm -hmm. See there, I spilled some. Anyway, I'll fill one jar. Let's just get a little out at a time. You see how handy those funnels are. If I had the funnel with me, I wouldn't have an issue with getting the chicken in the jars. Now, when you do this, you don't pack it way down in there real hard. You can tap it a little bit, but you don't want it just shoved and crammed in there. You want to have it where uh, the liquid will flow around the chicken in the jar. See, I can go ahead. I can push a little bit, get it where. Any empty spots in the jar are filled without packing it real tight. So 
a little bit more. Anyway, when you were doing raw meat, when you raw pack, which I rarely do, it releases its own juices. And when it does that, the meat will shrink a little. It will back off a little so that then there's a lot of juices going around the meat. This is already cooked, so it's not going to be releasing anything. The noise in the, the TV in the background, I forgot to turn it down. It's just the weather channel. Bring it up to one inch headspace. Work out the air bubbles. Wipe the rim of the jar very well. Put on a lid. Put on a ring. Remember what I've told you before about how to get the, well, I have the ring on straight. Hold on. There, there it goes. Now, you just tighten it until it starts to turn on the towel. There, that's it. That's all you tighten it. Put it in the canner. Continue filling one jar at a time. If you do one jar at a time, uh, then your food, your jars, everything, but none of this stuff cools down. It stays nice and hot the whole time. And your canner is heated See, too. I still have broth left. I'm guessing I'm going to have to put this in a container and freeze it for now because I'm actually out of jars. This one back here has a chip in the top. This is all the jars that are in here. Of course, it's going to steam on you. Got my heat turned up. It's I've got. Uh, I think I only got three pints of chicken but the rest of it is beautiful rich broth as you saw in that pan so now we're going to get it started okay now as always i just want to remind you that i'm going to be venting my canner for 10 minutes you may see steam coming out of here this is not where you vent from you vent from this part when they, when i get a full steady stream of steam coming out of here then I will tighten this down. This will actually come up before this begins to vent. And it will not be building pressure until after I tighten this down. See that or not? That little button is popped up. Anyway, it just started steaming. Out of the vent, so I'm going to give it its full 10 minutes, then I'll come back and tighten the top down. Okay, the canning process is done. And I'm going to take uh, the jars out of the canner. I already know that the pressure is down to zero. Check this. I'll loosen the lid. That leaves, if there, if there was any pressure, there's no pressure in there now. It's all out. So now, uh, I'll get the lid off of the canner. And start putting the jars over on the table. Okay, as always, you, when you take the lid off of your canner, open the canner away from your face so that there's any steam in there. It doesn't just burn your face. Uh, I didn't show that part, but I'm sure that you understand that. And, uh... I've showed it on several of the other ones. I'll show it on the next one. Alright. Here comes the first jar of chicken.
And you can probably see that there's a little bit of uh, that's white stuff. It's minerals. It's deposit mineral deposits from. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to kick it. Uh, from the water. I don't know if you can see that it's kind of in the shadow but anyway uh because i don't have any vinegar here uh to pour in the can i just had some of the spray bottle to put on that paper towel earlier but if you put vinegar in the water with when you're canning you can prevent some of that sediment from getting on the uh, jars. But the thing is, it really just washes right off. So it's not that big a deal. Most of this is going to be broth. It's four pints. I think I said three a while ago. It's four pints of chicken. And the rest of it is broth, and I still have broth left, but uh, I don't have any more jars with me. I have to see if my sister has any jars she'd want to loan me or trade me or something. Here's a little half pint jar. Half pint of Broth, but anyway, no, there's one there that might not be boiling. It's hard to tell, but anyway, there we go. Four pints of chicken meat deboned, and then let's see one, two, three, four pints of broth and a half a pint of broth. And I've got Roth left, so I, I need to can the rest of that. Let me get you turned around a little more. Right there. Anyway, that's my canning project. You'll have to excuse the noise. I'm fixing to take this camera off the tripod. Just wanted to show it to you. Right there. You see them boiling. And as I've said before, when they're boiling, they nearly always seal. The ones that, something that doesn't boil, and I, I kind of think that this one's not boiling. And if it don't, I'll have to freeze it because I'm also out of regular lids. Anyway, we'll see. Leave them, leave your jars alone for 12 to 24 hours. So I'll check these tomorrow, but in the meantime, have a good night. Thanks for watching.